Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1153. If you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video we want to talk about counting unique items. Now, I wrote a book called Control Shift Enter, Mastering Excel Array Formulas, and in that book there's a whole chapter on counting unique. Now, there's all sorts of different situations where you count unique, and it always amazes me how many different ones there are. But in this case, this question came in, and they wanted to count from two columns. So proton on 22416, proton 22416, it should be counted just once, not twice. So we're trying to count unique from two columns. Now I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. The array formula is what the person wanted because they wanted a single cell solution. That was it. But I'm going to come over to this sheet here and show you if you have Excel 2013, you can, with a pivot table, do it pretty darn fast. All right, so you ready? I want to add a second helper column, and we're going to call this join. All right, and we're going to join these two with equal sign two cells to my left, and the join symbol is Shift-7 ampersand, and then one cell to the left. Formulas do not see number formatting, so when I Control-Enter, you can see the actual formula sees the serial number, which is what underlines any date. But when I double-click and send this down, now I have a column, a single column with a unique identifier. You can see these two here are exactly the same. Now I can actually add this to a pivot table, Insert pivot table or the keyboard Alt N V. The trick to this is, is you have to click Add to this data model. And what it will do is it will take the product function out of the old pivot table function list and put a new distinct count in. So I'm going to put this on the existing sheet location, say E1, click OK. Now I can simply drag the join down to values. And watch this right click, and I'm going to go to Value Field Settings. And right in this dialog box, scroll all the way down to the bottom where product used to be is now distinct count. And so boom, 54. That's one way to do it. Now, since 2007, if we were to highlight just the first two columns without the join column, we could actually do a cheap and dirty way. I'm going to copy this, come over to the side, paste. And now with the table highlighted, I'm going to go to Data and Remove Duplicates. Notice I wanted to keep the original, so I, I copied it and Remove Duplicates. It has both columns. That means it's going to look through both columns and only get one of each unique record. Click OK. Notice here, 35 du duplicates found, 54 unique values. Click OK. If you didn't believe that, you could highlight and watch. As I'm highlighting, the little screen tip then tells us 54. You could also come up and simply do something like equals. And I'm going to count the dates, which is a number. If you were going to count the names, you'd have to use count a. So I'm going to Control Shift Down Arrow, Shift Enter to put the formula in cell and jump up. You need count Control B. All right, now we're going to look at our array formula. We're going to come back over here, and this is going to be a wild one. We want to first look at, and actually I'd like to name these two columns. So I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Asterisk, and I want to name this column name, this column dates. I could go to Formulas, Create from Selection, or I'm going to use the keyboard Control Shift F3. I want to uncheck left column. I just want to do from the top row and click OK. Now I could check this using the drop down, Dates, and boom, just like that, it's got the dates, names, boom, just like that. Now, this is going to use a bunch of functions. We're going to use the match and frequency and if and sum. And we're actually going to see some really pretty amazing things. We're going to start off with match, though. Now, match usually looks up an item like Joe, comma, within a range like this, comma, 0. It returns the relative position. So Joe, since that's the item we're looking up right there, when I highlight this in F9, it returns 1. Now, the lookup value usually expects a single value, but watch this. We're going to do what's called a function argument array operation. I'm going to choose the names. I'm going to type Names tab, and I'm going to have to join this to Dates. 
Now, now we've created in our formula that helper column that we saw with the pivot tables. If I highlight this and hit F9, there's that same concatenation or join of the name and the serial number, Control-Z. Now, function argument array operation, we gave it a lot of items so that actually the match will spit out lots of answers. Comma, we're actually going to do the same thing. Watch this. I'm going to click on that argument, Control-C, because I don't want to retype it out. Click on this lookup array and control V. Comma. And 0 is going to be the trick here. If we type 0, that means it can only see the first one. So right here, proton and this date is actually in position 4. But when it sees this one, because match, exact match with a 0 cannot get to that duplicate, it's going to report 4 a second time. Close parenthesis, highlight in F9. Now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4. That 4 represents these two records. So now we have to somehow gather up all of the 4s into a single position. Because if we were going to count this, it would give us 89, which is the total number of records. Now watch this. This is going to serve as the raw data for the frequency function, Control Z. Now the frequency function is a counting function where you give it a bunch of data, and we're going to give it some bins for counting. These are the upper and lower categories for each item to count from the data array. Now the thing is, what I really want in bins array is exactly 1 to the number 89 for my bins. Because not all positions, like this position right here, Whatever that is, that's 7. That's never going to get counted here. So I need for the bins have all of the relative positions 1 to 89. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do the row. And I'm going to pick either column because row simply returns the row, which will be 4, 5, 6, 7. That's not what I want. So I have to subtract row of the first one. Now really, this argument in row is expecting a single item. When I give it a bunch of items, F9, you can see it gives me 4, 5, 6, but I really want 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, Control Z. Right now, row minus row would mean 4 minus 4 is 0, so you have to add 1 back in. Now there's other ways to get what's called a sequential list of relative positions. But this one is very robust. If I insert rows up here or move it or everything, it will work. If I hit F9, you can see now I have my bins for counting, 1 to 89. Now watch this. Frequency, close parentheses, when I highlight this, remember we have data and bins. It will actually report a 0, for example, position 7. So F9, and there we go, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3. There's in position 0. That's a 7, because it didn't count any. What does that 3 mean right there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Whatever. That means it found 3 proton serial number dates. Right now, we have to think about the if function. If we gave this array of numbers to the logical test argument, if sees any non-zero number as true and zero as false, Control-Z. If this logical test right here, if I highlight that, remember it's all those numbers and zeros. All the numbers will be true. The zeros will be false. So what are we going to do? We're going to come to the end. Oh, that's kind of hard. That's tricky right there. The value of true, I want 1, which means I need a count of 1. Otherwise, and I'm going to leave false out, because when you leave that argument out, it'll put false in. So this if function with the frequency in the logical test, when I hit F9, it gives me exactly what I want. All the ones mean count 1 for the unique item it found, and all the falses will be ignored. Control Z. This formula is going to get strange here, because now I'm going to wrap it in sum. Now this formula has been around for a long time, and everyone says use Control Shift Enter. But the thing about array functions like frequency and line est and forecast and transpose, those are all array functions. They spit out an array of items. But for some strange reason, if you put array functions inside of other functions, which means they're being housed by other functions, it doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. And I've been using Control-Shift-Enter for years on this formula. It's not in my book. I have noted this in other subsequent videos. But watch this, Control-Enter, 54. That formula there works. Now sometimes you think, well, with array formulas, if it's sitting next to the ranges that it's looking at, it gets some answer through implicit intersection. But if you highlight this and move it, 
it can't see anything through implicit intersection because nothing's next to it. So that is amazing. That formula will work. So we saw this array formula for looking at two columns and finding unique records in essence. We saw the pivot table to, with 2013 distinct count, and we even saw remove duplicates. All right, we'll see you next video.